This is part two of our gas laws discussion. In this video, we're going to talk about two different gas laws, the ideal gas law and Dalton's law of partial pressure. First, let's talk about the ideal gas law. Now, previously, when we talked about combined gas law and Boyle's, Charles, and Gay-Lussac, what we didn't talk about is the number of gas molecules. And we know this as moles of gas. Right? So this is the fourth variable that we're going to talk about when we talk about the ideal gas law. So the, in the ideal gas law, we have set conditions. So we only have one pressure, one volume, and one temperature. And again, we're considering the number of moles of the gas. This is the ideal gas law. PV equals NRT. It's also known as Pivner because it kind of spells or sound or the way that it's spelled sounds like Pivner. Okay, so um, P stands for pressure, V stands for volume, N is the number of moles, R is a universal gas constant, so that is always given to you, and T is temperature. Again, temperature is in Kelvin. So there are two values for the universal gas constant, or R. Um, it's one is 0.0821 liters times eight atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And that is for when the pressure unit is atmospheres. If the pressure unit is kilopascals, we use the value 8.314 liters kilopascal per mole Kelvin. Okay, so again, atmospheres is with the 0.0821 value for R. KPA is with 8.314 value. So let's take a look at problem number one. Determine the temperature in Kelvin of 2.49 moles of gas contained in a liter of liter vessel at a pressure of 143 kilopascals. So we see that moles are given and we see just set conditions. There's one value for volume, there's one value for pressure. So that's how we know that we will be using ideal gas law, Pivner. So let's define the vari let's define all of these variables. The first thing that we're given is moles. So that's N, 2.49 moles. And then we're given volume, 1.0 liters, and then we're given pressure, 143 kilopascals. We don't know the temperature, and the R value, we're looking at our pressure unit, and our pressure unit is kilopascals. So look at the previous slide or look at your notes, which R value goes with kilopascals? That's 8.314, okay, and we're solving for temperature. So once we define all the variables, we're gonna plug it into the formula. So you should have something like that. We're gonna be solving for T, so we're gonna multiply and divide. The first problem, I'm gonna set it up for you completely. Our um, like units will cancel out, so kilopascals cancels out, liters cancels out, and so will moles. So we are left with Kelvin, and that's exactly what we want and we get a total value of 6.9 Kelvin. So again, here, you leave this alone because our, our answer is already in Kelvin. We do not add 273, we do not subtract 273. Remember, Kelvin is what we want for all gas substances. Problem number two, calculate the volume that a 0.323 mole sample of a gas will occupy at negative eight degrees Celsius in a pressure of 0 0.90 atmospheres. So again, let's define our variables. So we have moles, and we are given temperature. We have pressure, and pressure is in atmosphere. So again, look at your notes or look at the previous slides or rewind a little bit. Atmospheres, the R value is going to be 0.0821, right? Because atmosphere and atmosphere. Okay, so these two units need to uh, match up. All right, so that's the reason why we use this value. Okay, and then we're solving for volume. So again, for temperature, make sure you convert the temperature before you move on because we are given Celsius. So 273 Kelvin, that is equal to 265 Kelvin. All right, now if you don't convert the temperature right now and you decide later on I'll convert it, you're not going to get the same answer. So make sure you, that you convert all your units 
prior to setting it up and solving for it. Okay, so we're going to set it up, solve for V, and we get an answer of 7.8 liters. Problem number three. What is the pressure in atmospheres of a 0 0.108 gram sample of helium gas at a temperature of 293 Kelvin if its volume is 0 0.505 liters? So here we're not given moles, however, we are given grams, right? And by now you guys should know that we could convert grams of a sample to moles of a sample, right? So we know that given grams, because we can convert it, we know we're gonna be using the ideal gas law, PIVNERT. So we're gonna go ahead and define our variables again. So grams, we're gonna go ahead and just put it into the moles um, slot. So we're gonna put that as N, and then we have temperature, we have volume, we are solving for pressure, we're looking at um, the pressure units, and in this case, it's in atmospheres, right? So I tell you that it's atmospheres, which means your R value is going to be 0.0821, okay? Now, the next thing we're going to recognize is that the substance is actually given, and we have a helium gas. So remember the, sim the symbol for helium gas, helium is capital H-E. Now, why is that important? Right, because we need to convert our grams into moles. So, let, so let's do that before we move on, before we plug it in and try to solve this, right? Because again, N stands for moles. It does not stand for mass. It does not stand for grams, right? So we're going to take that and set it up as the fence. Bring the same unit down. So grams goes down. Moles goes on top. So what is the mass of helium? You have to look on your periodic table. Remember, we're going to round it to the 10th place. One mole of helium is equal to 4.00 grams of helium. So we're basically going to divide these numbers, 0 0.108 divided by 4, and you get 0 0.027 moles of helium. So let's go ahead and change out our grams here to moles. And these are the numbers that we'll be using that, uh, for this formula here. Okay, so we're going to plug it in solve for pressure, and we get pressure is equal to 1.29 atmospheres. The next law we're going to talk about is Dalton's law of partial pressure. In fact, this is our last law, gas law, that we're going to talk about. Dalton's law of partial pressure states that each gas in a mixture, in a gas mixture, exerts pressure independently of the other gases present. So what does that mean? That means, for example, if you look at this picture, this is one gas, this is another, and this is another. So we can say that it's hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and we can put it all together inside a container. Well, this gas has its own pressure, 200 kilopascals, second gas has its own pressure, and third gas has its own pressure. And Dalton's law of partial pressure says that the total pressure of a mixture of gases, so if we were to put all of these three in together, then the total pressure is simply the sum of all the individual gases together. Okay, so we have the total pressure is equal to pressure one plus pressure two plus pressure three. And depending on how many pressures you are given or how, however many gases you are given, you can add more to that, uh, more to that formula. So let's take a look at our first problem. What is the partial pressure of hydrogen gas in a mixture of hydrogen and helium if the total pressure is 600 millimeters of mercury and the partial pressure of helium is 439 millimeters of mercury? Now, I want to give you a picture, okay? So in this container, we have two types of gases. We have hydrogen gas, H2, and we have helium gas, HE, okay? Now, both of these gases together give a total pressure of 600 millimeters of mercury. Now, the each individual um, pressures are given, right? So for this particular problem, they're saying helium is 439 millimeters of mercury, then how much pressure is from hydrogen? Can you see how we can set up this problem? Right, it's just the total pressure is equal to the pressure from hydrogen plus the pressure from helium. So let's go ahead and plug in some numbers. We're given the total 600, we're given the pressure of helium, 439. So how are you gonna solve for the pressure of hydrogen? 
we're just going to subtract, right? So when you subtract, the pressure of hydrogen is equal to 161 millimeters of mercury. That's it. Problem number two looks like this. If the air from a blast furnace contains a total pressure of 3.7 atmospheres, 85% of it is oxygen, 15% of it is nitrogen. What is the partial pressure of oxygen near a blast furnace? First thing is, what do you notice about the percentages? They add up to 100%, right? So we're only dealing with these two uh, gases, oxygen and nitrogen. So again, I'm going to give you a picture. In this container, we have oxygen and nitrogen gas. It's a total pressure of 3.7 atmospheres, and the percentages are given for each. Now, which one do I want to focus on? I just want to focus on oxygen, right? And why is it that I only want to focus here? Even though this information is important, I don't care about this because they're not asking for nitrogen at all, right? And so for this one, another way to look at this problem is what is 85% of 3.7 atmospheres, okay? So if you need a formula, here's your formula. The pressure of gas X, gas A, so in this case is oxygen, O2, is equal to the total pressure times X of gas A, where X is a percent. All right, so in other words, it looks like this, okay? 3.7 atmospheres times 85%. Right? Remember I said earlier, what is 85% of 3.7? What is 85% of the total pressure? Okay. Now, can we just solve it like this? Can you just put in a percent like that and just solve and multiply? No. You have to do what to the percent? you got to change it to a decimal. Right? So 85% divided by 100 is 0.85. And then you can multiply from here to get a um, pressure of 3.1 atmospheres per oxygen. And that's it. These are your gas laws.